This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Hey, you want the cards from this deck? They got you! Except for that one-off digital only card, but then again they got thousands of cards that are not on Arena, so go check them out. Link is in the description down below. Since the beginning of time, humanity had only one question. When do we get permanent historic brawl? But now, these mad lads actually did it! Hell yeah! And well, hello there, random person on the internet who's hopefully as excited about this as I am because today we are finally playing some historic brawl with a deck called Yorion's Loop Station. When Yorion enters the battlefield, we can exile our non-land permanents and return them to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. So we play a bunch of cards that gain us value when they enter the battlefield, but also, and that's where the loop station part comes in, we play cards that blink Yorion so we can do all of this again. And if, well, if that card is a permanent, we just blink it with Yorion again and loop the whole process every end step if our opponent doesn't interact or scoops. Oh, they are scooping. Oh boy. And if you can get lucky enough that your opponent does not scoop, hey, maybe you can assemble something like Thassa, Lumbering Battlement and Yorion and any payoff. So you can play the Battlement, hide everything behind it, then end of turn, blink it with Thassa, everything will trigger again. As long as the Battlement triggers first, you can hide everything behind it again, trigger everything else, then use the Yorion trigger on the stack to flicker the Battlement again, you get all the triggers again and another Yorion on trigger so you can blink all of your stuff and at the end of your opponent's turn everything will come back again and you can repeat that process every turn cycle. Just letting you know the game will probably end pretty quickly at this point. If you have an agent of treachery in the mix for example you will steal three permanents every turn cycle and I don't think any opponent will sit through this for more than one or two turns. Anyways as any deck should we play some pretty clean interactions so we don't just get blown out by our opponent's broken stuff and talking about broken stuff we also play an infinite combo just to seal the deal if the game goes long. For more info on the deck check out my article in the description but for now let's wait. Oh you think I forgot huh? I'll never forget this. Anyways let's jump right into some games. Okay, here we are with a not very spectacular hand, but okay, opponent plays Velamarcus Lowerhold as their commander, plays a Plains and Selfless Savior, we play a tap land past the turn, opponent plays a Fighter class so they can 2 top an equipment, it's a Mirror Shield, a swing in for one, we draw a Lumbering Light Shield, that's a pretty good blocker, play it, whoa, hit their Stone Rain, so we just dodged a turn 3 Stone Rain here. Wow, that would have been devastating with only a tap land in hand. So opponent instead plays a Pilgrim of the Ages, gets a Plains and passes back. Actually, I think we Omen of the Sea here to find some other lands that are not Field of the Dead, so we don't get it blown up by Stone Rains. Those are some lands. Play Overwhelmed Apprentice, Mill 2, Scry 2, both to the top. Opponent, Stone Rain, sure, back down to two lands. Play a Sailor of Means, create a treasure and pass the turn. Opponent levels up fighter class, so now equipments cost two less to equip, so this mirror shield equips for free now. We draw the agent, play the field, pass the turn, hopefully don't have to counter anything here, although never mind. We can't afford them to blow up another land because that nope. could cut us off blue. Opponent passes the turn, we draw elite guard mage, maybe draw land. Maybe not, pass the turn, opponent levels up fighter class so now they can force our creatures to block. We draw a charming prince so we just play this and keep up tails and flicker the guard mage. End of turn, guard mage comes back, there's a land, opponent, Velamarcus, uh, nope. Swings in, forces our charming prince to block, re equips the mirror shield, just swing in with all. Play Yorion, bounce our entire board, too bad we don't have the Charming Prince anymore because we could use his ability to flicker Yorion again and then create a loop, but we're getting some pretty sweet value here anyway, so scry, draw, scry again, 
draw again and there search for glory costs one more opponent search for glory anyways finds a Rydane uh, that's fine we just have to watch out that our snow lands enter the battlefield tap now we play a land play Febethep draw land swing in and let's get the loop in starting play spark double copy Yorion exile everything remember to click decline here otherwise our yorion would go into the command zone and wouldn't come back end of turn all the triggers and scry draw scry again draw again draw again yorion exile everything and lumbering light shield oh swords to plowshares that is disgusting but fine we discard a snowland to hand size. Opponent Elspeth conquers death. Sure, exiles our Yorion. So our spark double will have nothing to copy and just die when it ETBs. They swing in for three. Everything comes back. Spark double dies. And here comes the triggers. Uh, I, okay. Swords to plowshares on lumbering light shields. Uh, questionable, but good for us. Draw. Scry. Oh, Blade Splicer and Cloud Blazer. Both on top and a draw both and lumbering light shield hits a lawyer warhound well our turn this end step felt like an entire turn but i guess we have a whole nother one here play a land play a blade splicer a swing in time for some more value play yorion again bounce everything again end of turn everything comes back oh sweet sweet value discard to hand size opponent's turn velamarcus Equips uh, the shield, swings in, forces some blocks. Velamarcus hits. Ugh, Lawhold command. Ugh. Okay. Yorion back to the command zone. We draw a temple, play a cloud blazer. Onto inversion and glorious protector. Both might be pretty important here. Play a temple, scry land to the bottom, and foretell the glorious protector. Just pass the turn. Elspeth conquers death, gets back a Rune Blaster, not too worried about this one, but swings in with Velemarchus and reconstruct history, that's an amazing hit here, gets back so many cards, including a Stone Rain, which, yep, 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 there it is, blow up the Field of the Dead, and Elspeth conquers death on our sale of means, sure, we draw a land, so we hope to play an on the inversion next turn, so... I guess there's no real use to committing to the board here, so we can just keep up Sublime Epiphany and pass the turn. Up. Oh boy, kinda forgot about the second chapter of Elspeth Conquer's Death. Um, yikes. <laughs> let's, uh, let's hope they don't go too crazy on us here. Play Heraldic Banner, swings in, Velemarchus hits Mizzix Mastery, hitting Oh, hitting stone rain again blows up another land hits us for nine and well just pass back that could have been worse okay let's do this let's play mind flayer target Rydane. sure they law hold command it's not like we didn't play around this play the glorious protector hide some creatures risk factor sure we don't really care and pass back to our opponents. They get back a loyal warhound and resurgence. Wow, I don't think we're dead, but that is pretty strong. Velamarcus rips apart our omen. Okay, we make some blocks here. And since our protector leaves the battlefield, we get back our creatures. Use the mind flayer to steal red ends, so we can use this to block Velamarcus. They swing again. <sighs> Rubble reading. So we actually have to find a land drop here. Oh boy, oh boy, we make some blocks. But even our fox knows this is gonna be pretty close here. There it is though, there's the land. Let's waste no more time here, wipe the board. Wow, that was so close. But we're not completely out of the woods yet. Opponent can replay Velamarcus. Swings in and oh, just misses. Ooh, this might go downhill pretty fast here. Well, let's play everybody's favorite. Steal the Velamarcus, play a land and swing in. Oh, ephemerate. Don't mind if I do. Steal a land, hit for five. Opponent. Draconic intervention does not deal damage to Velamarcus, but exiles our agent, which is probably the right call here. Anything else? Nope. Oh boy, we draw a time warp. Swing in. Semester's end does nothing. 
hit them for five, play a time warp, and now we can set up the infinite to close out this game. Teleportation cycle, take an additional turn, swing in, miss, sure. But now let's play the Scar of the Ages and present our opponent with an infinite and counter back up. Yep, opponent sees what's coming and scoops it up. Wow, what a game. I'm pretty sure that was the longest game I've ever recorded for content. Looking back on it, we could have done the Mind Flayer Glorious Protector play one turn earlier, but then again, I thought we could play Sublime Epiphany and totally forgot about that second chapter of Elspeth Conquers Death. But there is another thing we could have done here and that is tapping that like button. Ooh, baby. Real smooth over here. Like the video if you like this kind of content and next game. And here we go on the draw against Nicole Bolas the Ravager. Well, this hand doesn't really look spectacular, but we do have Field of the Dead, which is pretty good against Grixis. I guess it's a keep. Opponent plays a tapped land. We do the same. Opponent swamp and maze mine tome. We draw a land, play Thraven Inspector and Field of the Dead. Opponent scries to the top, plays a land, Woe Strider, we draw Faber Passage, play Legion's Landing, play an island, pass the turn, opponent scries to the bottom and uses Woe Strider to scry again, so they're probably looking for lands here. Well, that's a land and plays Artress Oracle of half Truths. we draw with a clue and let's see the pile. Okay, all of these cards aren't too scary for us. We could just risk tempting them into taking the one land, but then again, if they are not stuck on lands, that would be pretty bad. So I guess we do this. Entrancing Melody is not really good against us because we have Deputy of Detention. So yeah, let's see what they take here. Whip, they take the face down pile and pass the turn. We draw a Ghost Quarter, play a land and pass the turn. Opponent plays a land, swings in for three and does nothing, uh-huh, sure. Uh, that's the most obvious counter ever. So let's get our Yorion countered. Oh, wow, didn't see that coming. They draw with the Tome, play a tap land, Nico Bolas. We discard an island, they swing in for three and pass the turn. We play a Ghost Quarter, play a Time Orb, it resolves, take an extra turn. So now we can get some more value out of this Fable Passage, crack it, get two zombies, play Riga Caracal to get some board presence in case they want to flip the bowlers. Opponent plays a land, swings in for four, and plays multiple choice. Wow, letting us bounce a creature. So I think with Field of the Dead, we do have enough creatures on the battlefield. So I think it's best to just bounce the Thraben Inspector here to get some card advantage. Opponent creates a 4-4 and passes the turn. We draw a Lumbering Battlement, play Lead Guard Mage to try and find a land. There it is. Play it, get a zombie, play Thraben Inspector, pass the turn. Opponent draws one last card with a Tome and exiles it. Plays a land and swings in. Well, that just looks like a board wipe, so let's make some blocks here. Opponent sacks the token to scry, hits us for four, and extinction event on even. We keep the Caracal and the Thraben Inspector, so it's not too bad for us. Crack the clue, draw a card, um, play Yorion, and they petty theft our Caracal. Could have been worse. Bounce Inspector and Legion's Landing, play a land, create a zombie, end of turn, get our stuff back. Upon place a temple, scries, soul shatters our Yorion and Ash York. Ooh, but they are tapped out here, so we might get risky here if we draw a land. There is a land. So we can play the land, create a zombie, play the shipwreck dowser, get back the time warp, play time warp. And now we swing in to flip the Legion's Landing. So we are at 11 lands now. I know it sounds a bit hopeful, but if we manage to flicker the Shipwreck Dowser and replay Time Warp until we get 13 lands, we can use the Riptide Laboratory to bounce the Dowser, replay it and replay Time Warp every turn. Okay, it's a bit optimistic here, but they are tapped out, so now's the time to do it. Wow, Momentary Blink is exactly what we're looking for. Blink the Dowser. Get back a time warp, play a time warp, crack a clue, that's not a land, extra turn, uh, also not a land, flashback the blink, get back the time warp, 
play the time warp. Oh, tap land. Okay, sure, it was worth a try and we're in a pretty good position now. Play Meteor Golem, destroy Ashiok and pass the turn. Opponent plays a Bolas. Okay, we discard Exclusion Mage and they just pass the turn. Okay, so we use the laboratory to bounce the Dowser and there's the 13th land. Um, that should be game if they don't have interaction. Play the Dowser, get back time warp, play the land, play the time warp, bounce the Dowser, extra turn, play a land, play the Dowser, get back time warp, play the time warp, bounce the Dowser, extra turn. <laughs> so our opponent can just scoop. I mean, at this point we have represented a loop so okay they just scoop it up here understandable there was no way to come back from this without interaction wow that is not how we try to win games regularly but well sometimes it just works and against control you're not gonna pull off these crazy loop setups anyways the matchup is pretty okay because every card we play generates some incremental value so we can slowly grind our opponent out of the game um these games are pretty long though and i don't think we have time for another one so well that's it for the video like subscribe but then again it's historic brawl and we're probably not gonna play much historic brawl on here so i mean i guess while we're at it um bonus game okay quick little bonus game we are on the draw against vela marcus again opponent plays a tap land we play in planes opponent plays a planes we play a tap land, plays a land, passes back, start doing things here, play Confounding Conundrum, play Overwhelm the Prentice, Lightning Helix right away, but we still get to mill them for two and scry two cards to the bottom. Opponent plays Thrill of Possibility, plays a land. We draw an Elite Guard Mage, but let's play Sailor of Means, create a treasure and play Undo Inversion as a land. Wow, pretty sneaky mana tithe up here with the treasure. Let's see if our opponent falls for it. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> play Elite Guard Mage, find a tapped land, play it, swing for one, pass the turn. Opponent Soul Seals, the Guard Mage. We draw some Esther's End, but let's just swing in for one and play Yorion, Exile Abort, everything comes back. We draw a card, create a treasure. I play Solemn Simulacrum, probably hoping to ramp with it, but yeah. Are you sure no. about that? <laughs> wow, this has gotta be so frustrating. So we draw land, play it, a swing for four, play a Spark Double, targeting Yorion, and bounce our stuff. Remember to hit Decline here. End of turn, everything comes back. And I played this a bit conservative here. I did not blink my Orion again, because then if they remove the original one next turn, we lose our spark double. So we just keep the nine power flyers here. I know it's not the super value play, but it pressures our opponent quite a bit. And if everything goes wrong, we still have semesters end up. Our opponent places Skyclave Relic, pass the turn, we get back our stuff, create a treasure, draw a card, draw for turn, play land, play Priest of Ancient Law, draw a card, swing in for a nine, and Skyclave Apparition on the Relic. Opponent plays Unexpected Windfall, draws two cards, creates two treasures. We pass back, they play a land, play Velamarcus, swing in. Oh my lord, this is gonna be a pretty insane blowout here. Play the Master's End, <laughs> hide our entire board. Remember to hit the decline here and they blow up everything they got. <laughs> Yikes. They draw a card with the set robot. Yeah, that's, yep. Oh, <laughs> mark my quake for zero. That's probably a concession here. And our opponent had enough. Wow, what a disrespectful game. <laughs> and uh, that is it for the gameplay. We had some pretty spectacular games, but you're probably wondering, hey, where's this game where we flicker our entire board multiple time each turn cycle with Panamonicon and Agent of Treachery? Well, <laughs> turns out none of our opponents were willing to sit through all of this. And I can't really show you games that end in an early scoop. Funnily enough, most guilty of these are these busted value cannon decks like Golos, Kinnan and the Seeker. They either stormed us into the ground or scooped the second the game turned in our favor. To be fair though, I kind of get it with Argo decks. They got the first turns of the game to kill us, but once we stabilize the board and fire up the engine, 
there's no way to come back from there, so I guess it's fair that they scoop at this point. But the best games are the ones where you make a comeback from a situation like this. So remember, even if you face cards like Hushbringer or Containment Priest Overwhelming Splendor, or even get your Yorion and Step Trigger countered, this one is especially brutal by the way. As long as there are outs left, stay in the game and try to clutch it out because these are the really fun games. I guess a way to fix all of this could be to implement an additional rank queue so there's a downside to scooping because while I don't mind losing, I'd like to spend some time bathing in the glorious value when I manage to clutch out the win. And by the way, I already see the comments like, oh Kinnan is the best deck and everybody plays it. Oh no, it's Golos. Everybody plays Golos. No, it's Baral with all the counters. Oh, oh Freilis. No, oh right. no, it's Torbrand killing you on turn 4. The game oh, it's you Maxis. Maxis. Like, Heliod is Yarok also crazy. Is I've read comments about pretty much every type of commander being busted at this point. And sure, some of them are significantly better than others. But I guess we have to accept that it's a format and it's going to develop a meta game. Sure, I'd love to have a functioning deck rating and ranking system so you get matched up against similar power decks. But I mean, right now the way they do it is not good. So if you just rank the deck from a commander, I mean a Golos deck could be tuned to the max or play five color shrines. And while a Torbron deck might have an insane matchup against Emery, it has almost no chance of beating Heliod, but Heliod gets crushed by Emery just with a single spell bomb. So for now, I love the format, I love that it's permanent and I can't wait to try out all the new cards. If you want to read a little bit more about the loop station like cards that didn't make the cut or cards that would be sweet additions in the future, you can check out my article in the description. And for now, that is it for this video. Remember to tap that like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss another one. You can click here to check out all the other videos and well, I'll see you in the next one.